are down by the river and we're going to talk about bike rafting today and what an absolute great sport it is because it combines your biking and it combines your paddling. Now first and foremost to be able to bike raft you need a couple of things and the most important things is a bike and a pack raft. So when it comes to pack rafts a lot of the manufacturers will say that their pack raft can carry a bike on the front but as far as I'm aware there's only two models that have been specifically designed to carry a bike and one is the alpaca caribou which is the pack raft we're going to be using today and the other is the GP cargo if you know of any other model specifically designed please let me know in the comments below so why do you need a specific pack raft for bike rafting well the main thing is weight distribution now the alpaca caribou was designed specifically with an upturned bow so once you put the weight onto the pack raft it's going to sit properly in the water now you've got to have a fair bit of weight on the bow and also hanging over the sides of the pack raft as well so that's why you need a specifically designed pack raft for bike rafting so this is my setup for a day's micro adventure in so we're just out for a day today we're not overnight so I'm not carrying a sleeping bag and a tent and things like that. So the setup that we've got here, we've got the, the pack raft on the front there with the paddles. I've got a couple of water bottles. One of those carries a life straw inside of it so I can always uh, filter some water if I want to. And then the saddle bag at the back there, that's carrying my PFD and a few other bits and bobs as well. So I've been using the alpaca caribou for about three years and then it's absolute fantastic pack raft for bike rafting. It really, really is. I'll stick a link to the alpaca caribou in the description below if you're in the market for a, a bike rafting pack raft. It's lightweight. It's got a cargo fly on the back so I can shove all of my gear in the back of it. It's just absolutely brilliant, it really is. The one thing I will recommend is once you unroll your pack raft, put your tie down straps in first for your bike because once you inflate that pack raft, it can be a bit tricky to try and feed your tie down straps in once the boat's fully inflated. So most pack rafts, you've got gear loops specifically placed on the pack raft where you can tie your gear down. Not on the alpaca caribou. You've got these little patches here and you can actually feed your straps through the patches. Now, as mentioned before, these are specifically designed to carry your bike. So these two here are the ones to tie down your crossbar. Then you've got your rear frame and your fork on this side, and then your wheels go all on the top. As I mentioned before, make sure you feed your, uh, your straps through this before inflating the boat, because otherwise it is pretty difficult to try and feed them through once the boat's fully inflated. So the one thing I did forget to mention is setup. So when you're setting up your pack raft with your bike on top of it, try to do it as close as you can to the water, because they can be a little bit precarious to try and maneuver once you've got your bike on top of your pack raft. So if you can set up on a pontoon or set up right next to the river or the lake that's your best option and then you haven't got to carry too far one thing I like about the alpaca rafts is the inflation valve because there's a one-way inflation valve on the back so once you inflate your boat and you disconnect your inflation bag you're not going to lose any pressure at all So that's the alpaca caribou inflated using the inflation bag. I'm just going to bring this up to pressure using my lungs there and then we'll temper the boat once we've got the bike on and it's sitting into the water. So we're ready to put the bike onto the pack raft now. So the first thing we need to do is take the wheels off. So I find it easier just to upturn the bike and take your wheels off. So I've got cable brakes on this bike, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect the cable brakes. If you've got disc brakes, then you're going to need to remove your wheel first, and it's best if you stick that little chock that goes inside of your disc brake inside there, just on the off chance that your brake lever just gets, uh, gets pulled and then it pulls the pistons out, and it could be an absolute nightmare to try and slide uh, your disc back into the disc brake there. So next we put the bike onto the pack raft so that the pedal is resting on the left sponson and then I just like just to tuck that pedal right up to the top there and then you can just turn your forks over and then that is in position so that you can then tie that down and you've got your crossbar just where you've got your straps that we put in earlier as well. And then the final one for the frame, so I like to bring that over the chain to keep the chain out of my way and then that goes over both parts of the frame and then tucked nice and tightly in. So the rear wheel I like to just rest on that pedal there and then the front wheel I'll bring over this way a little bit because there's quite a lot of weight hanging over that side so I do want to spread the weight as much as I can and then we just use some other velcro straps that we've got just to tie the wheels onto the frame.
And then just at the top here, I've just got a small webbing strap that is just long enough just to go through both wheels. And we'll feed that through. And then we'll just cinch that down nice and tight. And then that will draw everything together. And that is the bike attached onto the pack raft. So that's pretty much everything all set up. Now, if I was going for a little bit longer, I'd have my backpack on top of my wheels just on the front there. But as we're just for the day, I'm just gonna shove my inflation bag and all my other bits and bobs that I can't put inside of the raft into my saddle bag. And then this will do up as a dry bag and keep everything dry as we're paddling down the river. So a pretty lightweight setup. Now, PFD, or should I say flotation device, because we're going lightweight and we're only carrying a few things, and most of the time anyway, I like to use this jacket, which is the Boy Boy by Amphibio, which is a completely inflatable flotation jacket. Now it's not classed as a PFD. If you want to see further information about this jacket, I'll stick a link up the top there to a review video I've done of this jacket. But I absolutely love it. For pack rafting, day trips, for long excursions and things, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's not the sort of thing I'd be wearing on white water, I can guarantee, but on a day like today when you're just doing calm water paddling, it's absolutely brilliant. It really is. So I'm just going to push down on the pack raft, turn the back round, and slide that into the water. And then having your paddle on a lanyard, that really, really helps just to tie that off. Then leaving the pack raft in the water just for a couple of minutes so you can then temper it and then head out on your adventure. a few things you need to watch out for when you're traveling with a bike on your pack raft and the first one and the most important is entrapment now with the bike on the front there's a few things that your shoelaces the bottom of your trousers can get caught on which will render you attached to your pack raft and could cause a lot of harm so one thing I would recommend is in the summer months when it's nice and warm in the water is just having a couple of dry runs on bailing out on your pack raft there bit of advice I can give you is if you do have to turn turtle, bring your knees up to your chest and tuck your feet in and come out that way. The other thing to watch out for is just knocking your paddle. Now with your bike on your pack raft there, you've got a derailleur hanging off that side, you've got your forks hanging off that side, you've got the possibility of knocking your paddle. Now if you're using something like a really expensive carbon fibre paddle, that's something that you really need to stay away from. So things you can do to just make sure that you don't knock your paddle is this adjustable paddle here. I've shortened this down a little bit so it's a little bit shorter. And then just practice, 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 just getting used to just putting your paddle strokes in uh, so that you're not touching any part of your bike at all. So bike rafting is an absolute brilliant way to explore. Whether you're doing little micro adventures like what I'm doing today, just out on the bike and then paddling back home on the pack raft, or whether you're doing multi-day adventures up in the hills or across the swamps, it's absolutely brilliant, it really is. I've done a trip a few months ago with Simon where we paddled out onto the Blythe Estuary and then biked along the beach, and that was an absolute fantastic overnight. So I'll stick a link to that up in the top there if you want to take a look at that video because that really, really shows just what bike rafting can do. So there we go, that pretty much brings this week's video to a close. I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it helpful. I'll stick some other uh, links in the description below to other videos and other websites if you're looking into uh, taking up the sport of bike rafting. So my name is Martin and I'm into hiking, bushcraft, pack rafting, fishing, pretty much being outdoors. There's absolutely loads and loads of content on the channel, so please do have a look. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you next time on the next one.